webinar and today's topic is this developing students listening skills in grades 5 to 9. Uh, this is a second webinar in the series of webinars devoted to listening skills and to developing them at school. Uh, during my first webinar, I talked extensively about different approaches to teaching listening and, how, uh, and different approaches to teaching languages, as well as how listening was represented in those approaches and the role of teaching listening uh, on the whole and in particular. Today, we are going to revise some of the things I've been talking about and where I hope we are going to learn some new things. But before we do that, could you please answer a question for me? Tell me, please, what helps you to understand spoken language better? So, any ideas? One of the suggestions. So, for some people, the gestures and the mimics of the speaker are important. What helps you? Uh, experience, writes Tatiana Nikola, uh, Nilovna Yegudina. Okay. Songs, says Galina. Films. Known words, yes, it's really important whether you know the words or whether they're, uh, they're new for you. Set phrases, excellent. Concentration, yes, exactly. Sometimes we really have to concentrate to understand the speaker. Uh, books, charm. Okay, excellent. Well, charm is another thing. If a speaker is charming or if you really like the speaker, you will make some efforts to understand him. Okay, I've put down some other suggestions. Apart from, uh, besides gestures and mimics, uh, you may rely on knowledge of context, uh, you may depend on the speaker's pronunciation or on the speaker's accent, whether it's a nat native type spe uh, speaker accent or non-native speaker accent. Background noises. For some people, background noises are good because background noises help to understand what the situation is going to be like. For other people, background noises are a big distraction and those people prefer to listen to a speaker in a very quiet room and so on. Knowledge of vocabulary, which some ha somebody has mentioned before. Grammar knowledge. Apart, some, uh, apart from some other things. Now, if you look at the list of things, of course this list could be continued and it can become a very long list indeed. But anyway, if you look at this list of things, you will see that there are two ways in which we process spoken information. One of the ways, and that's something I already mentioned in my previous webinar, one of the ways is called bottom-up. The way it works is this. You analyze sounds, you analyze words, and word groups. You analyze clauses, sentences, and so on, and you go up this ladder until you make the meaning of the entire text. So, for this approach, the word and the meaning of each and every word is of utmost importance. The second approach is the so-called top-down approach, or top-down processing. Here you rely on your background knowledge. You derive meaning from the gestures, from the mimics, you derive meaning from the context and they all help you to understand at least the general idea of the text. But in fact, in real life, we use both approaches. But some people prefer to use the bottom-up processing and some other people prefer to use top-down processing. Uh, could you please tell me, in what situations you rely most on bottom-up processing? So, for example, when you listen to a lecture in a lecture hall, uh, do you focus mostly on the main idea or do you focus mostly on detail? For some people it's top-down. For me it, it would probably be, be important to understand as many words and sentences as possible. So for me it would be bottom-up. But you see, processing really the choice of processing depends on your purpose in your, in your listening. Yes, for some people it's bottom-up, but for some people it's more, more important to understand the main idea. Okay, and when do you rely most on top-down approach? Main idea, okay. Right, so let's agree to this. Uh, the, uh, your choice of processing of spoken information, the, your, your choice of how you choose to understand, really depends on why you're listening, what you're listening for, and how important this is for you. Okay. Therefore, there are different types of listening. Uh, 
You've mentioned some of them already. Listening for the main idea when the main uh, when the task is or, or your goal is to understand what the story is about. The second type of listening is called listening for specific information. You are not interested in the main idea. You either already know what the story is about or you don't care for it. But what you need is uh, hear certain words. You need, for example, when you listen to uh, when somebody gives you their phone number, you need to listen, uh, you need to understand every single number, every single figure. When somebody tells you the price, you need to hear only the price, uh, and you're not really interested in some other details. And another type of listening is called listening for detail. But in fact, there are other types of listening. Let me tell you very shortly about what other types of listening there are, and let's think together about when we use those types of listening. So the first type is the so-called appreciative listening, when you listen for pleasure. Uh, for example, when you go to a concert and somebody comes out and sings a beautiful song, sometimes this song can be in a foreign language, in a language which you don't understand at all, but you continue listening because you are pleased by what you hear, so you listen for pleasure. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of you will agree with me when I say that sometimes it's better not to understand some of the, f uh, some of the songs that are played on TV or on the radio. Uh, I'm sure you know, uh, you all know what I'm talking about. Okay, Natalia Nikolaevna agrees with me and some other people do, do so as well. So, one of the types of listening is appreciative, when you listen for pleasure. Another type of listening is the so-called discriminative listening. Uh, I said in the brackets that it is not listening for understanding. Now, let me explain what I mean. Sometimes you hear some voices and you only want to know whether it's a man or a woman speaking. You don't care about what they're talking about. You are not interested in the meaning. But all you need to know is like, oh, there are some voices behind, behind a closed door. I wonder who he is with. Is that a man or a woman he's talking to? And then you hear, okay, it's a man, no problems. Or then you say, oh, there's a woman in there. I should definitely listen more. <laughs> well, of course, this is just a hypothetical situation. But anyway, this is another type of listening. One more type of listening is the so-called therapeutic listening, when you lend a sympathetic ear to somebody. In this case, you don't really even have to react. When a friend comes around to you and tells about his or her problems, uh, sometimes all you can say is, oh, it's such a pity, I feel sorry for you, I sympathize. And that's basically all you need to say. And you don't even have to understand what the, per what the other person is talking about. It's enough when you show sympathy. And this is a specific kind of listening. And one more type of listening is something that we as teachers do quite a lot. It's called critical listening. You use that to analyze what is being said and to evaluate it. For example, people who specialize in political studies do a lot of critical listening. Journalists also have to do a lot of critical listening when they take an interview. We as teachers have to do critical listening a lot every single day because we need to evaluate our students and to decide not only what they're talking about and how well they're talking about it, but whether their speech matches certain criteria or it doesn't match them and what grade it deserves. So we do a lot of evaluation through listening and because of listening. So you see, there are more types of different, uh, of different ways we listen and different purposes. Uh, let's take a look at an exercise in a textbook. There are two listening tasks. Tell me, please, which uh, type of listening is task number 1A for? Uh, I will read the task for you. Listen to the radio program and say what the main topic is. Yes, it's listening for the main idea. You don't need to understand anything at all. Uh, all you have to say, oh, it's a radio program about hedgehogs, for example, or about farming. And task number two, listen again and for questions one to four, fill in the missing information. Use only one word in each case. For example, Simon has got interested in, yes, it's listening for specific information. Uh, now, I'd like to stress that listening for detail is not the same as listening for specific information. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure we all know that, but we'll talk about that in more detail later on. Uh, now, I'd like to suggest a few situations to you which happen in real life and tell me, please, which type of listening 
you personally would use in those situations. I would like to stress, though, that for, other, for different people, different types of listening could be different because of the task. For example, where for some people, it, there will be uh, sympathetic listening, therapeutic listening. For other people, it will be listening for specific information because you really want to know what the problem is. So when you listen to a weather forecast, what type of listening would that be? Specific information. That's right for most of us because all we need to know is whether it's going to be cold or warm, whether it's going to rain or not. And we are not really interested in listening uh, in great detail. Okay. I'm glad we all agree on that or we seem to agree. Uh, when you listen to a friend telling about how he or she spent the weekend, what type of listening would that be for you? For some people, it's sympathetic. It's like, oh, I don't really care what you did at the weekend, but I will listen to you anyway. For other people, it will be listening for detail. Hmm, I'm really interested what she did. Let, uh, let's hear it. For some people, it will be listening for the main idea. Oh, okay, I see she's had a good weekend. That's great. Okay, it really depends on the situation. Uh, another case. When you listen to a friend telling you how his or her partner did something wrong, what kind of listening could that be? For some people, it's therapeutic. Okay, let her speak. I will understand. For some people, it's listening for detail. And for some people, it's for the main idea. You really want to know whether the partner was really guilty or whether he was not. Okay. Another situation. A friend is telling you a cooking recipe. What kind of listening would that be? For some people, it's for detail, and for others, it's for specific information. Okay, let me clarify on this a little bit. It would be listening for detail if you don't know this recipe, and then every single detail is important. You need to know whether you use salt, or for example, whether you don't need to use salt, how much of salt you, uh, you want to use, and everything. And for those people who are already familiar with this recipe, it could well be listening for specific information because all you are interested in is how many eggs exactly go in this cake and you know everything else. <coughs> okay, another situation. When you listen to a train announcement at the train station, what kind of listening would that be for you? For some people, it's for detail, and for some people, it's for specific information. Okay, let me give you an example. For example, the speaker uh, says in the announcement, uh, train to Glasgow is, is now boarding at platform 3. Platform 3, train to Glasgow is now boarding. Would that be listening for detail, or are you interested in where the train is going to and what platform number it is? For some people, it would be specific. For other people, it would still be for detail, because for them, it's important to understand every single word. But that only goes to show how we differently process information. Okay, when you listen to a song, what type of listening could that be? For some people, it's listening for pleasure. For some people, it's listening for detail, because you want to know what the song is about. Okay. But for some people, it's listening for pleasure. All right. And when you listen to a piece of music, it's definitely listening for pleasure, isn't it? Okay. And when you listen to an audiobook, this is a very, very complex type of listening. Some people listen for pleasure. Some people try to get the main idea. Some people want to understand what the story is about. Besides, since this is a long story, and you have to listen to it for a long time, your goals can change during the process. And that's why the type of listening can also change uh, at this, uh, during the process. Now, I hope that this example shows that listening is a very complex process. The type of listening really depends on your goal and on the situation. So both the context and your intention are important. But at the same time, uh, those examples help us to understand what needs to be taught at school. First of all, it is phonemic awareness, so that we could distinguish different sounds and understand that, for example, a bat is not the same as a bat. Okay? And the second thing that we need to learn is listening strategies. Students should be able to understand why they're listening, what they're listening for, and what can help them 
to understand the information better. Now, let's take a look at how we can do it. Okay? Uh, now, it's important to remember that listening is not only a goal in itself. Of course, uh, we as teachers have to practice listening as a skill, but also listening becomes an important and powerful tool in our classes, because listening can, helps, uh, can help us to achieve lots of goals during a lesson and to do lots of things. In this way, listening exercises at school can be used to do a few things at the same time, to practice listening strategies, first and foremost, to introduce new information, because a lot of information is introduced orally. To clarify students' values, sometimes when a student listens to a story and then says whether he or she agrees with the characters of the story or whether he or she disagrees with them. Uh, to tune in to new information, to focus on some details or to get ready to understand new information. Listening exercises can also be used to boost motivation. Uh, to practice other types of speech as well. So you see there are lots of different things that listening exercises can do and lots of goals and purposes. Let's take a look at the most common types of listening. The most common types of listening at school are as follows. In primary school we mostly focus on phonemic awareness and listening for the main idea. There are several reasons for it. First of all, phonemic hearing uh, phonemic awareness is very low in our students in primary school and it's very easy for them to mix up different sounds. That's why we dedicate a lot of time to careful and meticulous practice of those sounds and the difference between, two so uh, between different sounds. Uh, and as for listening for the main idea, it also depends on your level of language proficiency. If you're not very proficient, it's much easier and much more important for you to be able to understand at least the main idea. When we go on to secondary school in grades 5 to 9, we practice listening for the main idea, of course. We practice listening for specific information and sometimes, but very, very seldom, we listen for detail. Why do we listen for detail seldom? Uh, partly because our students are not very proficient listeners as yet. On the other hand, listening for detail presupposes that not only your mastery of language is great, but also that you have something to say, uh, that, you, uh, that you have a big background knowledge, a wide variety of things which are very familiar to you and which help to understand and to infer meaning. That's why listening for detail gradually becomes prominent, uh, I'd say in grades 8 and 9. But before that, we focus more on other types of listening. And of course, in senior school, in the final two years, we listen for specific information and we listen for detail. Of course, there will be students who need practice with phonemic awareness. Of course, there are students who need to learn to listen to the main idea. But by grades 10 and 11, most students already can listen for the main idea and they have a smaller or greater phonemic awareness. Okay. Uh, and different girls require different types of exercises. For example, if you want to introduce new information in the lesson, then you will start lesson with a listening exercise, and new information is introduced through listening. If you want to clarify students' values, <coughs> you can introduce controversial information through listening, and then students tell their opinions. If you want to boost motivation, you use a lot of songs. Well, some of us use more songs than others, but I, uh, I'm sure you will agree that each of us, anyway, pref uh, likes to use songs in the classroom, don't we? And when you want to practice strategies, there is a variety uh, listening strategies. There is a wide variety of exercises. Let's let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, when you listen for the main idea, the task may sound as follows: listen and tell what the problem was. Listen and tell whether they were happy or not. Listen and tell whether it was a funny incident or a tragic one. Listening for specific information can, uh, can be formulated like this. Listen and fill in the gaps. Listen and complete the sentences. Listen and fill in the table. Listen and mark on the diagram. Listen and put the sentences or the pictures in the correct order. Listen and correct the information and so on. Uh, and when you listen for detail, the task would normally sound like this. Listen and tell what you think. Listen and tell why do you think this happened. So the task requires a student to infer some information, to analyze something. Okay. 
uh, let's take a look at some examples. So, for example, this is a way to introduce new information, and this example is uh, taken from Enjoy English Textbook Grade 5. The lesson starts with a listening exercise. Uh, uh, and the task sounds as follows. Listen and say what Dima wants to do after his classes. And we start the topic of school clubs in this way. And then students work with this information. Uh, this is another way of introducing new information. Uh, now, since uh, the pages are not quite as big, let me enlarge the slide. If the slide is too big, just tell me and I will shrink it again. But anyway, that's another example from Enjoy English Textbook Grade 8. Listen to, uh, listen to the list of some means of communication, match them with the definitions. We introduce the meaning of new words and at the same time we activate the student's background knowledge. Uh, we can also introduce dialogue vocabulary. We listen to it and we practice pronunciation at the same time. Uh, here is an example from happyenglish.iu textbook grade, uh, grade 8. A very similar example, in fact. Listen to the words and expressions and repeat them after the speaker. In this way, the students learn the pronunciation of new words and at the same time they learn the meaning. Uh, now, let's take a look at this example. Le uh, this is an example from Enjoy English Grade 6. Listen to the dialogues. Match the dialogues and the places where they're taking place. Complete the table. Pay attention, there is one extra place. Now, I'd like you to listen to this exercise, and I hope we'll all be able to hear this. Now, let's listen and do the task. Exercise 81. Listen to the dialogues. Match the dialogues and the places where they are taking place. Complete the table. Pay attention, there is one extra place. Dialogue 1 Hello. Hello. Can I have an apple juice, please? Here you are. Anything else? No, thanks. A pound, please? Thanks. Thank you. Dialogue 2 Good morning. Can I help you? Good morning. Have you got something for a sore throat? Have you got a temperature? No, I haven't. Only a sore throat. I see. Here you are. Anything else? No, thanks. Dialogue 3 Good morning. Can I help you? Good morning. Can I have the novel The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain? Just a minute. Mm. Here you are. Hmm. This book is quite thick and there aren't any pictures in it. Yes, but it's very interesting. The novel is really worth reading. OK. Thank you. You should bring the book back in ten days. Enjoy the book. Thanks. Dialogue 4 Hello, can I help you? Hello. Can I change American dollars for British pounds here? Yes, of course. How much would you like to change? One hundred dollars. Here you are. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <coughs> okay. Uh, I see that not everybody has been able to, uh, to hear the exercise, unfortunately. We'll try to fix this problem, but in the meantime, I see that uh, all of you has given correct answers. Okay, excellent. Uh, uh, now, what would help the students to understand this task? Keywords, uh, says Svetlana Varzanovna, that's correct. How about the background no noises? So it's words and the background noises. So there are two ways of processing at the same time. Both the bottom up when you focus on the words and the top down when you grasp the context because you hear some sounds and some other things. Okay, excellent. Uh, now, by the way, 
I, uh, I saw a question in the web chat when and how you could get a certificate for the webinar which uh, which happened previously now if you were unable to download it during the webinar could you please send an email at this address connect at englishteachers.iu and we'll send you the certificate but let's continue with our examples here is another exercise listening for the main idea but this exercise uh, is, uh, comes from Enjoy English Textbook Grade 9. Let's take a look at the logic of this exercise. First of all, the students do a geographical quiz. They start thinking about different countries and about the explorers. And at the same time, they try to recall some information. After that, the task goes like this. Listen to the people and guess what they have been to. What makes you think so? So let us listen to this uh, to these people and tell where they have been to. Okay? Are you ready? Yes. So let's start. Unit two, section one, exercise twelve. Listen to the people and guess where they've been to. What makes you think so? Hello, I'm Paul. I have recently been to a fantastic country. Only a century ago, it was a poor country where people worked very hard to grow rice, their essential food. They have made great progress in technology since then and have turned their country into one of the most developed in the world. They are famous for information technology or IT, as it is often called, and have computerized practically everything. Even in homes, robots do a lot of the housework, and there are even robot toys for kids. Hi, I'm Michelle. I've been to the country where people often speak about the weather and play a lot of golf. They are usually very polite, calm, and carefully observant of their traditions, God knows why, but their football fans can get crazy and violent after matches. That's why they are sometimes not allowed to go to other countries where important football games are held. Okay, this was the exercise and those who were able to hear the sound answered absolutely correctly. And we, if we go on to ask our students what made them think so, I'm sure that the students will name a lot of details. But, of course, different students would probably name different details, wouldn't they? So, for some students, it will be listening for specific information. For other students, it might well turn into an exercise in listening for detail. Okay. I'm sorry that there was no sound for some people. Uh, I think it really depends on the internet connection. But at least you can hear me and you see the task and you know the answers. At the same time, uh, the problem is that the sound starts at different times for some people. That's why some of you were uh, faster with the answers than the others. Okay, let's take a look at some other exercises. So, for example, in happyenglish.iu textbook, every single text of the textbook is recorded as an audio file. So you can listen to basically the entire textbook as an audiobook, for example, or listen to it like an audiobook. But at the same time, listening exercises are very special there in that they enable you and the students to approach texts from several different points. Let's take a look at this exercise. Listen to the conversation. Do you think the situation is funny? Why? Why not? So the students listen to the story first. They do not read it uh, if they can cope with listening and understanding it. And believe me, in, with this course book, students are able to understand longish, quite long texts. When they, uh, when they hear them. So they listen to the conversation and after that they come back to the story and read it and analyze it from the grammar point of view and so on. Uh, here are some more examples of uh, how that, uh, the listening for specific information tasks look like in different textbooks. So for example, these tasks are extracts from Enjoy English Grade 5 textbook. For example, listen and say what season Simon and Susan like and why. Listen and say what places of interest Barbara liked in Russia. Uh, or for example, this exercise. 
staying with a British family. Uh, in, uh, in Joe English book grade six, our students are going to stay with British families because they're members of a travel club and they go abroad. Let's listen to the phone conversation and let's try to tell whether this exercise would be too difficult for students, whether it would be interesting for them or whether it would be just right. Okay? So let's try. Four. Staying with a British family. Exercise 54. Listen to the phone conversation. Look at the picture and say who Mrs. Wilson should meet at the club's hall. Hello, this is Mr. Smith. Can I speak to Mrs. Wilson, please? Hang on a moment, Mr. Smith. I'll get her. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Morning, Mrs. Wilson. I'd like to tell you about the children who are going to stay with your family next week. The rooms are ready and we've thought about the cultural programme. We're ready to meet our guests. Two members of our Explorers Club will stay with your family. Olivia Revel from Australia and Nikita Smirnov from Russia. Lovely. We've never been to Australia or Russia. I hope the children will tell us lots of interesting things about their countries. <laughs> I'm sure they will. They're sociable and friendly. You should collect them tomorrow at 11am in the hall of the club. What do they look like? Nikita is quite handsome, but he isn't very tall. He has got short, fair hair and grey eyes. He's all smiles. And what does Olivia look like? Olivia is a pretty young girl with long, red, wavy hair. She is short and slim. She wears glasses. I see. I hope we'll become friends. So, tomorrow morning, 11am, the hall, a handsome, fair boy and a pretty, slim girl. That's right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. OK, judging by the answer, most of you have been able to hear the story. Some people say that they've heard only the noise, unfortunately. So there's Olivia and Nikita, and you know what they look like. Uh, surprisingly, or rather coincidentally, the answers you give very much look like the answer to the great question of life and everything. And the, uh, and the answer is, if you remember the book, is 42. I'm referring, of course, to Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, anyway, let's continue with our exercises. But tell me, please, would this exercise be too difficult for students? Would it be just right? Would it be interesting or would it be useful? Okay, Olga says that this story is very interesting. Great. Interesting, says Lyubov Alexeyevna, and useful, of course. Great, excellent. Uh, you know, the thing is that every time we prepare a recording for our, uh, for our textbooks, we do it in Britain and we employ British actors who are of the same age as our target audience so that our school children would listen or uh, would hear how their actual peer speaks in different countries and those young actors can imitate different regional accents as well so that we show a variety of accents and a variety of pronunciations to our students. Okay, good. Let's take a look at some more examples. Here are some more examples of tasks uh, for listening for specific information uh, taken from Enjoy English Textbook Grade 7, like this. Listen to the story. As you listen, complete the following sentences. The first letters of the missing words will help you. This is listening on the level of a single word. Uh, or rather understanding over the word level. We are talking about bottom-up approach here. We start with the level of single words, then with the level of sentences, and then we understand the entire text. Exercise 60. Look at the picture of Hampton Private School where students study Russian. Listen to what a teacher of Russian says about it. Complete the sentences. Hampton School is a school for... So this is listening on the level of a sentence. And finally, listening for specific detail but on the level of the text. 
Listen to what George say about his problems, says. Fill in the table. George is allowed to. George is not allowed to. You have to hear more words and more details. But at the same time, this is still listening for specific information. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, when they take a look at this exercises they can be as large as an entire dialogue of course so if you look at this example from enjoy english textbook grade 9 you will see that here is an entire dialogue and basically in every phrase in every utterance something is missing you have to understand the dialogue on the level of words so that's listening for specific information but there are so many words here that this dialogue and this exercise becomes a bridge from uh, like you know a, transi a transition exercise from listening to specific information towards listening for detail because in the end the students will end up understanding the entire text so many questions there are but at the same time this text is not difficult for them to understand because the speech is very clear the pronunciation is enunciated and uh, the actors are really good uh, there are some other exercises. For example, in this exercise taken from happyenglish.iu textbook grade 8, students need to listen to the information about opening types and correct the mistake. They need to find one mistake and, for the, and to do that they need to listen very, very attentively and very carefully. Uh, but let me show you another exercise, a larger one. Misha goes to a store in the USA, and we are talking about Happy English Dota U textbook grade 9, he goes to, uh, to a store and something happens there. Two hours later, Misha finally left the shop and now he's talking to his friends Emily and Rob and telling them what happened to him. Let's listen to the story and put the pictures in the correct order. Match the pictures with the mini dialogues. Now, what I'd like you to do is you don't really need to match the pictures and put them into the correct order. Let's listen to the story and tell whether, uh, uh, yet again, let's evaluate it as we do as teachers, whether you find it suitable for your students, and uh, could you please tell what you think of the recording, not just of the story itself, but also of the recording, what things would be most useful for your students. So, let's try to listen. Unit 2, Lesson 5. Exercise 7. Two hours later, Misha finally left the shop. Now he is talking to Emily and Rob and telling them what happened to him. Listen to the story and put the pictures in the correct order. Match the pictures and the mini dialogues. You'll never believe what has just happened to me, guys. Just imagine. I am in a designer clothes shop, and suddenly I see Angela V. She is a very famous Russian pop star. I ask her for an autograph, and she gives it to me. Then she asks me to help her do some shopping. I agree, and then it all starts. She is very rude and gives order after order. She tells the shop assistants to bring her every dress in the shop. I have to translate her orders to the shop assistants, who get very angry, but don't say anything. Then they bring her the dresses, and Angela tries them on. She shows every dress to the shop assistants, and tells them that she looks nice in it. The shop assistants say that she looks great. Then. She tries the dresses on again and tells the shop assistants that the colour of one dress is more suitable than the other. So the shop assistants answer very politely that all the dresses are red. Then she gets very upset and asks them not to be rude. And I have to translate all that. Finally, one of the shop assistants tells her to leave the shop she cries and asks him to let her stay. Just at that moment, people with cameras turn up and shout, Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> the whole situation was a joke for a TV program that's called Star Jokes. The whole thing was Angela's idea. 
In fact, she is a very nice person, and she speaks very good English too. Okay, this was the story, and some people are already coming up with the answers. Somebody says it's difficult to understand. Uh, now, if you work with the Happy English Daughter U textbook, you will uh, you will know that. These stories are not difficult for the students uh, who work with this textbook, and there are several reasons for it. Reason number one is that every single text in the textbook is recorded uh, as an audio file, so students are used to listening to stories from the very beginning and from the very first lessons. You have plenty of materials to brush up your students' listening. Uh, the second reason why this story is not very difficult for the students is because they do not need to understand every single detail. All they need to understand is, uh, all they need to do is match the pictures to bits of the story. And besides, they know some background information. They know Misha, they know why he went to the shop, and they have already talked about some things which may happen in the shop sometimes. So, you see, uh, there are other things that just listening skills that can be instrumental or influential in understanding and that can be important uh, okay let's take a look at some other examples uh, here are some more examples from happy english dot iu textbook grade nine uh, that's how students are focused to learn to listen for specific information for example listen to the speaker and find out how many servings of these things you should eat fill in the table uh, there are similar exercises uh, in New Millennium English course. Here is another exercise from New Millennium English course uh, te textbook grade 5 where students need to listen to the story and put the pictures in the correct order. Here are some more things. Uh, New Millennium English grade 5, time travel. This is a role play. Students play at, exp uh, at time explorers and time travelers. They go to time travel center they get a task. Uh, so each team is assigned a symbol, a smiley, a star, a snowflake, and so on. And then they listen to the announcement from the time travel center so that they need to identify where they are, which team it is, and what time they're in. And then they check themselves. Okay, some more examples of listening for specific information. New Millennium English, grade 9. Once again, as I've said, this is a transition period uh, where students learn not only to listen for specific information, but also they, they learn to listen for detail. Let's take a look at the tasks. Task 1A, listen to the instruction, uh, to the, uh, sorry, listen to the introduction to the guided tour around the reading room of the British Museum and tick the instructions that, that the guide gives to the visitors. And task number two, listen to the guided tour and write true or false, T or F, next to each statement. Okay. Uh, listening as an exercise is used in progress checks. For example, in this case, in the progress check in Enjoy English Grade 9, you will see that students are required to listen for detail. The task goes as follows. Listen to the speakers and choose the sentences that reflect the feelings of the people in the most accurate way. You may miss some specific information in this exercise, but at the same time, you need to understand how people feel about something. Okay. Uh, for those people who cannot hear the recordings, we are recording the webinar on video. So I hope that if you want to, you will be able to watch it online and to listen to these exercises. Okay. Some more exercises. Listening for detail in uh, New Millennium English Grade 7. Listen to what the children are saying about their home, towns, and answer the question, who do the photos belong to? There is one extra photo. If you look at the format of this exercise, you will see that this is the same format that is used in standardized exams, uh, like Russian national exam and a lot of international exams. Uh, and when we talk about boosting motivation, one of the things, one of the tools that works best for this is using songs. I would like you to listen to a song from Happy English Daughter You Grade 6. Another feature of this course is that its authors wrote many songs 
and many poems, they not only wrote the lyrics, but they also took part in composing the music. Uh, that's why we are going to listen another creation by Clara and Marianne Kaufman. Uh, let's take a look at this. Are you ready? Okay, I hope it's going to work for most of you. Okay, uh, as I've said before, the, the song was written by Clara and Marianne Kaufman, and the singer is a Russian girl. She's, uh, she sings in a, local, uh, in, a, in a local band, which, uh, as far as I know, at least used to travel a lot all over Russia, uh, and sometimes abroad and gave concerts there. Okay, uh, uh, I'd like to stress, though, that songs in Happy English.IU course are used not only for boosting the students' motivation, but also for work with vocabulary, for analyzing grammar, and for learning new words. Uh, if you are interested, uh, we had already a webinar in which Clara Kaufman told about how songs are used in her course book. Uh, you will watch the recording of this webinar and listen to the songs from the course book. The video recordings of the webinar are all posted on the EnglishTeachers.ru web forum. Uh, of course, listening becomes a tool which helps us to practice other types of speech. It's not enough just to listen to something. We don't let it hang in the air. 
we follow it up with some other exercises, don't we? Uh, uh, like in this example from Enjoy English Textbook Grade 7. Listen to two students talking about their future. Fill in the table. We listen to the stories. We fill in the table. And then there is a speaking task. Describe how you see yourself in 10 years' time. Listen to a classmate's stories. Another example. Uh, listening exercises are very good for practicing cross-curricular skills. Uh, partly because our subject is very cross-curricular, we talk about all parts of life and everything. But at the same time, when you listen to things, you become to understand yourself better. And sometimes it's easier to understand information which is spoken rather than to read a long story. Uh, I'd like you to show you an example from, uh, happy, uh, from New Millennium English textbook grade 8. Uh, in this unit, students talk about how, brain, how the brain functions. They talk about the function. In the previous lesson, they've talked about the functions of the left hemisphere and of the right hemisphere and how that shapes your perception and uh, how you think and how you feel about things and so on. Let us do an exercise. Okay? Uh, I'd like you to listen to a psychologist and follow the instructions. And also, please, write down uh, what you do with your right hand and what you do with your left hand. Okay, are you ready? Let's do it. Unit 5, Lesson 2, <coughs> Exercise 1A. You are now going to do some physical exercises. Please note down each time whether the answer is left or right. 1. Block up one nostril with your thumb and breathe through the other at the same time. And then change over. You will normally find that you breathe more easily through one nostril than through the other. Which one is this? Two. Fold your hands together in front of you. This should be the most natural and comfortable position for you. Which thumb is on the top? Three, make a telescope with your hands. Pretend you are using a telescope. Which eye do you use to look through the telescope? Four, turn your face to your partner. Smile. Which side of the smile is higher? Five, stand up. Your partner should stand behind you and place her or his hands on your shoulders. Which shoulder is higher? Six, stand on one leg. Which leg do you prefer to stand on? Look at your notes. If you answered more questions as left, you are right brain dominant. If you answered more questions as right, you are left brain dominant. If you have an equal number, you tend to process more with the whole brain. Okay, so we see that some of our listeners, some of the audience, are left brain dominance. Uh, well, in fact, most of all, uh, uh, most of us would be because left uh, left hemisphere uh, works with languages and imagination. Uh, so most of us are left brained, but at the same time, it's really interesting to notice the difference and to learn more about ourselves. So this exercise is not only interesting, but it helps you to explore your own selves. Okay.
Another example of a cross-curricular skill, the skill-building exercise, is taken from Enjoy English Textbook Grade 6. Look at this. How do British people spend their weekends? Listen to the report and study the diagram. Find out which activities are more and less popular in Britain. Compare the results with the classmates' activities. With this exercise, we teach our students to understand and to interpret diagrams. And this is something which is going to come in handy, not only after they leave school, but also if you train your students for the Olympiads uh, in the English language. Uh, I could go on with these examples, there are lots and lots of them. But there is another important function of listening exercise. Oh, like this for example, another cross-curricular skills exercise. I shouldn't forget that because it's really interesting. Uh, uh, first, students do a quiz. Quiz. What do you know about exploring space? Choose the right answer. Listen and find out if you were right. And the questions are like this. Who was the first astronaut? Who was the first person who came to the idea of space flight uh, rockets? Who constructed the first spaceship? And so on. So the students learn those things. Some will learn. Some will recall uh, what they learned in other lessons. And then there is this exercise. Listen to the teenagers speaking about space exploration. As you listen to the comments, complete the following sentences. The first letters of the mission words will help you. So first of all, you brush up the student's knowledge of the context, and then it's listening for specific information. But at the same time, this is a good start of a new topic when you talk about exploration and so on. Okay, the seminar, the, the, web, the webinar is going to last for about five or six more minutes at the most. Okay, Tatiana says that students don't know, don't know any of these people. That's really sad indeed, but the level of background knowledge in our students is uh, at a terribly low level sometimes. That's why these exercises help our students to understand and to know more. Okay. Uh, another important function of listening exercises is control. Uh, with this, we can control how well our students are mastering the language. We can control the progress, we can control their achievements, and so on. That depends on the different types of tests. Uh, like, for example, in this exercise, put the two words in the, uh, in the box into two columns, jobs and the results of someone's work. More than one variant is possible. Listen and check if you were right. Uh, or like this. If you take a look at this progress check exercise from Enjoy English uh, Grade 6, uh, you will see that the format of this exercise is very similar to the format of the final exams in Grades 9 and 10. Let me read the task for you, although it's in Russian. Задание 1. Послушай 4 рассказа детей о летних каникулах. Установи соответствие между каждым рассказом и местом, где прошли каникулы. Занеси свои ответы в таблицу и впиши соответствующую букву. Ты услышишь каждый рассказ дважды. So it's the same format uh, that we use in different exams. And there are many listening strategies exercises. Here is an example of a listening strategy exercise from New Millennium English Grade 9. You are going to listen to a conversation between Mr. Douglas and the travel agent. Which of the following subjects do you think will be discussed? Here we focus students to use their background knowledge and their imagination and prediction skills. So here we focus students on the uh, top-down approach. We understand the context and, that and this helps us to understand the story. And then there is a list of subjects discussed and we listen and check which subjects were discussed. This is listening for specific information. We could go on talking about listening strategies, but I plan to talk about them in a separate webinar uh, next month, in September, I think, uh, in which I will be talking about uh, developing listening skills in grades 10 and 11. We are now going to finish this webinar for today. I hope you've enjoyed some of the things that you've heard and you found some of the information useful. Now, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Now, if you want me to answer in Russian, please write your question in Russian. If you prefer me to answer in English, write your question in English. And I also give you the link to the certificate. I'll keep repeating giving the link 
because the chat goes up and it's difficult to follow it sometimes. Now somebody says in Russian. Uh, I think I, uh, I may have missed the question. Okay, thank you. Useful information. Спасибо, было очень интересно. Спасибо. Helpful and interesting as usual. Okay, thank you. Now, it's really difficult to read in green color. I'll try to see it. I think they mean they want you to talk in Russian. Ну что ж, коллеги, если вы хотите, мы можем поговорить по-русски. <coughs> Поэтому, если есть какие-то вопросы... Кстати, коллеги, если вопросы э, у вас э, не только по теме семинара, а просто по методике или какие-то административно-организационные, я тоже могу постараться на них ответить, поскольку я являюсь не только специалистом по методике, но и главным редактором издательства «Титул». Uh, у меня uh, у нас большие планы уже на сентябрьские и на октябрьские вебинары. Мы планируем проводить по два вебинара в неделю. Uh, у меня есть целый список лекторов. Я думаю, что мы приготовили для вас интересные вещи. Вот, семинары можно, конечно, проводить и по-русски, и по-английски. Я провожу по-английски последние несколько вебинаров, потому что меня об этом просили участники вебинаров. Я думаю, что мы будем делать вебинары и на русском, и на английском, и их чередовать. Так что для тех, кому интересно, хочется по-английски послушать, пожалуйста. А вот пишет Людмила Максимовна, интересно и полезно, особенно с учетом того, что первый год иду по новым Enjoy English 6 класс. Будет ли разработана... Я буду стараться отвечать на вопросы, кто-то пишет лучше на английском. Когда выйдут новые книги Редап? Книги Редап для 5 и 8 класса выйдут в начале сентября, они полностью готовы. В рабочей программе... Так, что еще? На английском было бы полезней. Пытаюсь найти, что еще пропустить. Что, что еще, точнее, не пропустить бы. Будет ли разработано программное обеспечение для лингофонного кабинета? Коллеги, в ближайшее время таких планов нет. Почему нет? Потому что мы сейчас готовимся к выпуску электронных учебников и учебных пособий, которые можно будет использовать на, план, на мобильных компьютерах и на компьютерах настольных. Можно ли будет использовать эти замечательные учебники в Крыму, спрашивает Дарья Викторовна Антонюк. Дарья Викторовна, конечно, учебники использовать можно. Если вы их не сможете использовать как основной учебник, вы их можете использовать как учебное пособие, хотя бы как дополнительные материалы. А дальше уже, как вы спланируете... Так и будет сделано. Альбина Викторовна Владимировна спрашивает, решился ли вопрос по перечню учебников. Коллеги, с федеральным перечнем вот такая ситуация. Министерство юстиции выпустило официальное письмо, в котором оно отвечает, что федеральный перечень не может применяться как в качестве нормативного акта. То есть этот документ не имеет силы нормативного акта. Это всего лишь рекомендация. Если вы хотите, вы можете следовать рекомендации. Если нет, вы можете относиться к ней как к пустой бумажке. То есть это позиция Министерства юстиции. Юстиции. Министерство образования вместе с федеральным перечнем выпустило письмо, в котором оно говорит, в том числе и следующее, если учебники уже есть в библиотеках, но они не входят в федеральный перечень, в течение пяти лет вы ими можете пользоваться. Также министерство говорит, если вы начали работать по одной линии, то из других линий учебники закупать нецелесообразно. Дети имеют право закончить обучение предмету, по тем учебникам, по которым начали. Обучение предмету, напомню, в нашем с вами случае с английским языком, это со второго по одиннадцатый класс. Поэтому у нас есть все документы, которые позволяют вам работать по тем учебникам, по которым вы работаете и которые были уже закуплены в библиотеке. А, что еще? Ссылка на сертификат. Пожалуйста, повторяю. Два семинара в неделю очень много. Будет уже работать тетради уроки. Коллеги, мы будем все наши вебинары выкладывать в видеозаписи онлайн, поэтому можно посмотреть в удобное для вас время. Библиотекарь трясет перечень, не дает заказать учебники на Новый год. Коллеги, если библиотекарь мешает вам работать, 
то это, в общем-то, нарушение в том числе и, нормативно, и, и, и письма Министерства образования. И письмо, и письмо Министерства юстиции вы можете скачать э, на сайте englishteachers.ru. Это официальные документы, покажите библиотекарю. Э, Елена пишет, спасибо, первый раз попал на вебинар на английском языке, очень интересно и приятно. Уважаемые коллеги, для нас с вами, для большинства из нас, по крайней мере, английский язык не родной, поэтому я очень старался говорить так, чтобы меня было нетрудно понимать, я знаю, что я иногда слишком быстро говорю, но это личностные особенности. Презентация, когда будет, спрашивает Ольга Андреева. Я постараюсь ее выложить в ближайший час. Хотелось бы посмотреть урок по ВГОС на видео. Есть ссылки. Полного урока нет, но есть записи фрагментов уроков. Это те видеозаписи, которые нам поступали на конкурс «Золотые уроки России». Мы этот конкурс в этом году снова будем проводить. Я думаю, что видеозаписи будет больше. Вы можете зайти на форуме в тему «Конкурсы», найти конкурс «Золотые уроки России-2013» и пройти по ссылкам, посмотреть видеозаписи. Если смотреть вебинар в записи «Сертификат будет?» спрашивает Галина. Вы знаете, мы сертификаты выдаем за участие в вебинарах, но мы сейчас планируем открывать дистанционные курсы, я надеюсь, что с октября или, может быть, с конца сентября эти курсы э поддерживаются лицензии на образовательную деятельность, вы сможете эти курсы пройти для тех, у кого подошел срок повышения квалификации и школы оплачивают. Если вы хотите за свой счет, то курсы будут стоить недорого, порядка, наверное, 3-3,5 тысяч рублей, то есть вы сможете пройти и получить сертификат тогда. Что еще? Было письмо Министерства о разрешении учебников, сама замдиректора обращалась в Министерство, разрешили официально. Министерство разрешает пользоваться учебниками, не входящими в федеральный перечень. Это письмо Минобразования 29 апреля. Есть ли ключи к Enjoy English? Рабочий тетрадь 2, подготовка и ГИА. Коллеги, мы выкладывали ключи, насколько я помню, на сайте englishteachers.ru. Посмотрите, если не получится, то постараемся эти ключи для вас выложить. Что еще? Два вебинара в неделю немного, не, пожалуйста, ничего не менять, новые в методике всегда важно. Постараемся добавлять информацию. Ну что ж, когда я обучался в институте, наш преподаватель говорил очень быстро, поэтому привык к быстрому темпу речи, дети вроде к моей речи привыкли. Да, это дело привычки, в самом деле привычка и практика только всего. Как записаться на курсы? Коллеги, онлайн-курсы мы объявим отдельно. Я разошлю информационное письмо, точно так же, как мы рассылаем информационное письмо про э, вебинары. У вас у всех будет возможность. Будут ли вебинары по обучению детей с ограниченными возможностями, спрашивает Владислав. Владислав, мы постараемся организовать. У нас сейчас запланированы вебинары на сентябрь, на октябрь. Посмотрим, если получится, может быть, на ноябрь. Попробуем организовать. На какой период планируете курсы? Курсы будут постоянными. То есть можно будет в любое время к ним подсоединиться и работать в, в своем собственном темпе. У нас будут преподаватели на курсах, которые откликнутся на ваши задания, помогут и проконсультируют. А платно? А с получением сертификата платно. По поводу скорости речи и темперамента. Действительно, Татьяна Ниловна пишет, скорость речи зависит от темперамента. Темперамент – это особенность функционирования центральной нервной системы, ничего здесь не сделаешь. А вебинар желательно вечером, у нас две смены, пишет Олеся. Коллеги, мы вебинары будем проводить по-прежнему в 11 утра по московскому времени и в 5 вечера. То есть большинство из вас успеют. Что еще? Наталья Малышева, присоединяюсь к просьбе Владислава по теме вебинара, постараемся. Спасибо за вебинар и так далее. Ну что ж, уважаемые коллеги, если есть еще вопросы, с удовольствием отвечу. Вы их можете продолжать задавать на englishteachers.ru. Если не получается сертификат скачать, это я отвечаю на вопрос первого буквы, вы можете написать нам на адрес connect собака englishteachers.ru. Мы вам пришлем сертификат по электронной почте. Есть ли что-нибудь для коррекционных школ? Вы знаете, с коррекционными школами очень интересная ситуация сейчас по новым стандартам по вгос нет такого типа школы как коррекционная но сейчас готовится к утверждению 6 новых стандартов для коррекционных как раз классов которые позволят работать поэтому я думаю что мы найдем информацию для вас постараемся представить в форме вебинара ну что ж большое вам спасибо дети оста дети остались поэтому новые в госы специальные в госы будут они так называются спец в гос вебинары с носителями языка коллеги попробуем если получится организуем у меня есть несколько вариантов но надо учитывать то что разница по времени очень большая не всегда удобно состыковать я попробую договориться попытаемся
Какие перспективы у МК Бибалетовой? Коллеги, перспективы хорошие. Мы подали в суд. Судебный процесс идет. Министерство юстиции уже заявило, что федеральный перечень ненормативные акты не может выполняться в качестве нормативного акта. Поэтому ждем решения суда. Уже два, одно заседание было, второе намечено на август. Надеемся, что арбитражный суд решит эту ситуацию. Более того, Министерство образования сейчас принимает новый порядок формирования федерального перечня, измененный. А это, скорее всего, повлечет за собой новую экспертизу, новое включение в перечень. Так что будем готовиться и к этому. Что еще? Печать на сертификате будет? Коллеги, когда будет лицензия на образовательную деятельность, печать будет на сертификате. Сейчас пока утвержденной формы нет, поэтому сейчас пока без печати, но на бланке, на специальном. А какое ваше отношение к зарубежным ОМК? Коллеги, вы знаете, если ОМК хороший, то, на мой взгляд, не столь важно, кем и где он написан, лишь бы он был хороший и эффективный. Другое дело, что ОМК, который создан для всего мира, он, к сожалению, все равно требует доработки для конкретного класса и конкретной страны. Потому что, например, всегда есть определенная степень важности и мотивации ребенка. Конечно, можно говорить про экологию на примерах проблем в бразильской сельве, в амазонской. Но ведь гораздо важнее поговорить про экологию наверное, на примерах нашей страны и того, что мы можем сделать, чтобы наша жизнь была лучше. Поэтому всегда есть такие моменты, которые в зарубежных ОМК приходится дорабатывать, переделывать. Но другое дело, что какой бы ни был замечательный ОМК, один год по нему поработал, второй год начинаешь работать, всегда хочется каких-то дополнений, всегда чего-то ищешь. Поэтому я всегда выступаю за то, чтобы у нас в классе сосуществовали удобные материалы, вне зависимости от их происхождения. Базовый ОМК, наверное, все-таки лучше всего тот, который создан для России, российскими специалистами, с учетом их знания российских потребностей, школьников и стандартов. А дополнять почему бы и нет. Мы же дополняем и статьями из газет, и видеофильмами, и так далее. Правда же? Что еще? Надо учитывать пожелания родителей и учителей. Школа не просто машина выполнения указаний бюрократов. А это действительно так. А, к сожалению... Не всегда руководство и администрация это понимает, у них свои задачи. Поэтому все опять ложится на нас с вами. Как мы учтем потребности реальные наших учеников, так у нас работа и пойдет. А для этого мы и УМК выбираем, и остальные дополнительные средства. А что еще? Вправе выбирать учебники абсолютно. Более того, в законе об образовании, в праве педагогических работников и написано право на выбор учебников, учебных пособий, даже средств и способов контроля. Что еще? Где-то дорогие тетради у других ОМК. Ну, коллеги, здесь ничего не могу сказать. Ничего не сказали по поводу дисков к Enjoy English. Я пропустил этот вопрос, Татьяна Нил, напишите, пожалуйста, еще раз, в чем вопрос. Диски выпускаются, они в формате MP3. Диски обучающие компьютерной программы также есть в продаже, в том числе и в электронном виде. То есть не обязательно покупать диск, можно скачать установочный файл, получить код активации и работать с ним. Что еще? Какие вопросы? Ну, пожалуй, больше, наверное, вопросов и комментариев нет. Татьяна Геннадьевна Митюгина, спасибо вам, что поучаствовали. Я знаю, что вы были утром на вебинаре, на котором плохо у нас связь работала. Спа приятно видеть, что вы пришли еще раз. Ну что ж, уважаемые коллеги, тогда мы на сегодня вебинар заканчиваем. А очень неудобно, что диски только на одном компьютере. Коллеги, сейчас диски работают с защитой. Мы готовимся, я надеюсь, что мы в конце октября, в начале ноября запустим онлайн-сервисы. По этим онлайн-сервисам вам достаточно будет иметь только пароли. И с этим паролем сможете с любого компьютера заходить столько, сколько надо. И тогда эта проблема будет решена. Ну что ж, спасибо большое, большое, уважаемые коллеги, хорошего вам вечера, особенно тем, кто издалека и поздней ночи нас слышал. Я надеюсь, что те, кто были вынуждены покинуть вебинар, кто-то за ребенком пошел, кто-то к врачу и так далее, надеюсь, что все у них решится благополучно. Хорошего вам вечера, я надеюсь, что вы получите удовольствие от последних дней лета и отпуска. Приглашаю вас на наш следующий вебинар августовский, который будет проводить Людмила Викторовна Метелкина, замечательный учитель из города Меленки Владимир области она очень интересно будет рассказывать о системном обучении грамматики в том числе и с учетом требований итоговой аттестации
Вот Светлана Раловец пишет, я имею все диски аудио и компьютерные программы, а у нас начинают закупать другие учебники. Уважаемый коллега, я понимаю, что это легче сказать, чем сделать, но отстаивайте ваши учебники, по которым вам удобно работать. Не позволяйте кома библиотекарям командовать вами учителями. В конце концов, это вы решаете, как вы будете работать, а не те, кто к этому отношения не имеет. А диски с играми будут, спрашивает Владислав. Будут, готовим, выпустим диск с языковыми играми. Сейчас, кстати, обратите внимание, у нас на форуме englishteachers.ru, на портале точнее, идет игра на приз. Вы можете поиграть, проверить ваши знания английского языка и выиграть призы, в, в, в качестве которых мы даем, дарим победителям обучающие компьютерные программы. Заходите, кликайте по вкладочке «Интерактив», первое в меню у вас выпадает «Игра на приз», Играйте и выигрывайте. Мы очень рады подарить самым лучшим учителям самые лучшие обучающие компьютерные программы. Где приобрести диски с играми? Коллеги, когда выйдут, их можно будет приобрести через интернет-магазин. Мы над этим работаем. Вот Наталья Владимировна Чертопрудова уже пишет «Классная игра». Кто-то пишет «Играем». Замечательно. Библиотеку приказала администрация, а им еще выше. Коллеги, требуйте у администрации письменного распоряжения. Показывайте им письмо Министерства юстиции и Министерства образования. Их письменно распоряжения не могут противоречить распоряжениям вышестоящего министерства. <coughs> как правило, все сразу начинают стесняться такие распоряжения давать. А устно вы сами знаете, сегодня сказали, завтра отказались, да еще и скажут, что это вы сами придумали. Ну что ж, давайте на хорошей ноте закончим. Вот как, как пишет Наталья Малышева, приложим все усилия, чтобы продолжить линию учебников, надеюсь, нам повезет. Коллеги, все в наших руках. Вы сами знаете, когда работаешь, все получается. Когда не работаешь, то гораздо сложнее будет. Я надеюсь, чтобы все у нас получалось. Желаю вам. До свидания, хорошего вам вечера, хорошего августа. Приходите на вебинар Людмилы Викторовны Метелкиной. Список вебинаров на сентябрь скоро опубликуем. Вебинары интересные будут. Мы и про Олимпиады поговорим, и про итоговую аттестацию, и про многое-многое другое. И на русском будут вебинары, и на английском. Спасибо и до свидания.